I, I just think this game's a scam. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to What's in the Box, the semi-daily game show. I don't know when it is. It's not like we've got a budget. We are the online quarantine panel show that everyone is calling on too much. We've got some great guests and some great games for you today. Up first is she is the Bard of Northampton, I think. No, just something like that. Um, let's ask her more questions about it. It's Donna Scott. Hello. Hello. Yes. What, what what are the Bard of you exactly? Uh, well, the first official bard of Northampton. That's the very first one 10 years ago. There have been 10 of them. Current one is Paul Giffney. I'm not Paul Giffney. No, no. Hello, okay, Paul. That, that, <laughs> actually, they said that on your CV that you sent in, uh, not Paul Giffney. So uh, that's that's good to know. How are you doing, Donna? I'm all right. <laughs> I mean, chaos has reigned today. Uh, I have had a, a massive blitz of the office trying to get it ready for you. Oh, thank you very much. You really didn't need to. I mean, uh, I, what I've done is my bedroom is an entire mess, except for the stuff that's behind me in the webcam point of view. It's a very uh, good tip. I suggest you all use it if you're all working from home. Next up, he is the punsmith. He's very, very good at them. And I'm so happy to have him on my show because that means it'll be full of puns. No pressure. It's Tony Cowards. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Tony? Is the beard from day one of quarantine or <laughs> yeah, a was, permanent fixture? I was clean, clean shaven when we started this lockdown. Yeah. And this episode was recorded on day two of the lockdown. So <laughs> that's pretty good. So much testosterone coming out of my face. Hey. Our third guest. You can see him on Mark Grimshaw is show, socially distanced and a new sort of a chat show he's doing. It's Mark Grimshaw. Hello. The great North Yorkshire fringe comedian of the year. Was it last I, year or the year before? I think it was about two, three years ago oh, now. That's fine. But as we say on What's in the Box, comedy is cancelled, so you're still whatever you were before. <laughs> How are you doing, Mark? I'm I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Excellent. I, I do love your wallpaper. It's very reminiscent of a prison. I mean, that's why I'm fine. I'm just locked up, so it's <laughs> perfectly fine. Um, no, it's, like For me, it's quite weird because life hasn't really changed. Like I work in a shop. I'm a key worker, so... Which shop? For legal reasons, I am not going to name them. Just Excellent. in case there's anything negative about them later in the show. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Right, it's time to start the show. We're going to start, as we always do, with round one. Woo! What in the, what in the box? What in the box? Round one, as always, is called What's in the Box? I have something in my pink and green box, and our guests are going to guess what it is I'm going to pull out. They'll most likely be wrong, but it's up to them to convince me why their guess was the closest. So we're going to start off with Donna Scott. Donna, what do you think I'm mm. going to pull out of the box? It's a pink box. I'm going to guess uh, something pink. Um, Mr. Blobby. Mr. Blobby in the box. Okay, Donna, we'll get back to your guest in a moment. Next up, Mark Grimshaw. What do you think I'm going to pull out of my box? See, I'm going to try and go a bit more realistic. Uh, you seem like the sort of person that would have a childhood diary. And you also seem like the sort of person that has a lack of shame and so therefore would read it on stream. Oh, Ooh. I like that answer. That's going to take, although it doesn't matter what answer it is. It's it's the next bit that uh, means completely, points for you. Uh, Tony, you're down there. What do you think I'm going to pull out uh, of the box? Well, I'm going to use my latent psychic abilities. And uh, for some reason, as soon as you held the box up, the words potato peeler came into my head. <laughs> Potato peeler. Well, can I get a drum roll as I pull out the actual item that's in the box? The answer is a yellow teapot. It is a yellow teapot. I won this as part of uh, Improv Provocateur in the Fringe 2018, a lovely improv game by Alex Leem. Uh, originally, it had fuck off written in Sharpie, but over the years, that has rubbed off. Donna. Why is Mr. Blobby the most similar to this yellow teapot than the other two guesses? Well, it's exactly the same. I mean, look, it, <laughs> you bought it was pink out of a, a, a pink box and you produced some yellow. 
and Mr. Blobby is famously pink and yellow and of the same shape and also has quite a lot to do with, with uh, childhood. And I remember my sister had a, a big yellow teapot as a child and it was around about the same time as Noel's house party was on. Okay. So it's you, very like Mr. Blobby. You were close that it shared a colour attribute and the shape, but you lost me on bringing in your sister's childhood, which I know nothing about. So how would that have convinced me? Next up, Mark Grimshaw. Uh, what was your our childhood diary? Well, Why is this yellow teapot close to a childhood diary? Well, since the memories of childhood were just mentioned by my own competitor, you know, they've argued my case for me here because this is a diary <laughs> in object form. It tells a story of your past. And that is well, a story you are now never going to forget. It genuinely does, because I just said I won this two years ago. And it did have writing on it as well. Mm. Yeah, and thanks for saying told... I'm right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it well. tells the book off. And what childhood diary doesn't? <laughs> Not many, Mark. Um, I don't know if that <laughs> reveals a lot about your childhood. <laughs> Next up, Tony but... Cowards. Uh, what was your guess again? Potato peeler. Potato peeler. Tony, why is this too much like a potato peeler than the other guesses? Well, I have to say, Donna and Mark gave compelling evidence, but they're way off the mark, aren't they? I mean, a teapot actually belongs in the kitchen. It is in the kind of realm of kitchen utensils uh, in the same sort of genre as a potato peeler. And not, not only that, uh, maybe the psychic message got a bit distorted because potato peeler, obviously, both words begin with P. And maybe I, I didn't quite get the T, T, and pot obviously begins with P as well. It, Just say it in your mouth, po potato, potato peeler, pot. I mean, All potato, is potato begins with pot. If Tony does win this, I want to see you peel a potato with that teapot. That's <laughs> bullshit. That easy, might be easy. Around. P-O-T. Sorry, he asked for the closest item, not an anagram of the item. <laughs> Potato peeler is an anagram of El Oreo teapot. So if the teapot <laughs> yeah. had Oreos in there, the, the famous uh, uh, black you and white put, you could hide Oreos in crossword there. answer. Um, I will say that this round, this round, only, only one person gets three points in this round. That's how it's always been. And because, yes, it does remind me of my past and did have writing on, it is Mark who was the most convincing answer there. So that is three points for Mark what? after round one, despite the wordplay and despite, you know, it was, you were so close it's to the colour and shape, but it was the just bringing in someone I've never met before. That's not going to convince me otherwise. <laughs> the points go to Mark. It's time for round two. What in the, what in the box? What in the box? Round two is called What's in the Gift Box? Ooh. Just bear with me here. Our comedian guests are going to produce an item out of their box. This will then be attributed to another comedian guest. It's up to the other one to say why it is the best gift in the world that they could possibly receive, whether it's replacing something that's missing in their life, but why their gift is the perfect gift for them. So, Donna, you're going to produce an item out of your box, which will be a gift for Mark. Can you please oh. show us what that item is? Yes. Mark, I've got a treat for you. <laughs> I've got you a sock monkey. That's a sock monkey. I'm not going to do the voice. It's not professional. <laughs> um, could you tell us a bit more about the sock monkey? So Mark has all the information needed. Yeah, this is a sock monkey made by the lady who gave me my first ever comedy gig, Tam's in Pain. <laughs> and as you can see, it is made out of a sock and it is a monkey and it's covered in hearts because it's lovely. <laughs> those those well are the two main ingredients of a sock monkey, I'm aware. Uh, Mark, it is now up to you. This is an acting game. You have to tell me why this heart covered sock monkey is the gift that you've always wanted. Well, quite frankly, I have always dreamed of owning a sock monkey. And up until literally 20 seconds ago, I did not know what the two components of a sock monkey were. <laughs> and now I know it is a monkey made of sock. And that, is, that itself is a gift to me. Thank you. <laughs> I like that, the gift of information. Very good, Mark. Speaking of Mark, you have an item out of your box that is a gift for Tony. Could you please show us what this item is? Yes, for Tony, I've got you something you've always wanted. It's a Northern Rail fail to purchase notice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, is, is there a story behind this? Yes, I didn't buy a train ticket and I got a fine. So we're, I'm, we're going I'm for simple this episode. <laughs> but Tony, this is the ideal gift. This is what you've always wanted. This is what you've asked Santa for for the last few years. Please explain why. Why a, a Northern Rail failed to to purchase notice? Uh, clearly, look at me. I I'm a train spotter. I'm a train spotter. <laughs> I uh, I collect train ephemera, not just train tickets. But because tr anyone can get a train ticket, train tickets are common as anything. <laughs> but a failure. <laughs> A failure to buy a ticket, almost almost an anti-ticket, the almost the opposite of a ticket. They, they they are hard to come by, and I've got I've got them from South Western Trains. I've got them from Thameslink. Uh, I did not purchase yeah. thing, but but Northern Rail is is would be the the crown jewels in my collection. I've got Scott Rail, I've got East Anglian, I've got a Virgin one, but Northern Rail, Mark, you know me so well. Uh, is that which I've I'm, now because I've got them all readily framed but there's a gap right in the middle for a northern rail failure to purchase notice are you, are you making like a mosaic like yeah. when they're all put together it'll <laughs> yeah, just say mosaic. failure to pay yeah if you stare at them it's like one of those magic eye pictures if you stare at them yeah it shows just you the that. face of richard branson <laughs> <laughs> does this game mean that tony is now legally obligated to pay this that's if he wins. That's if he wins. That oh, is the okay. prize for the winner. The prize. Oh, is, they, is, they it actually, is it actually outstanding? Yes. Oh. <laughs> is Mark just used this game show as an opportunity to get rid of you, all your outstanding fines? Is the next one yeah. a parking ticket? Yeah, my box is full of debts. Um, there's an there. <laughs> is that like a chat up line? You've got fine written all over you. Well, hey. <laughs> It is not. It is financial desperation. <laughs> written all over you. Written all over you. Come on, we've all got that right. written all over. We're going to move <laughs> along. We're going to move along. Donna, you are about to receive a gift from Tony. What is oh. the gift, Tony? Oh. Antifungal talcum powder for athlete's <laughs> foot. <laughs> oh. Thank you for putting the sticker over because other antibacterial powder is available from the shops. We are, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's not how we get our money here. I didn't here put the sticker. I didn't put the sticker over it. It came with that for some reason. No, it it's, it seems like you've been recently been on Britain's Got Talent, and they just <laughs> told you, "Oh no, could you could you cover the logo for us, please?" Do you know what brand it is? Uh, yeah, it's it's Shoal. Is that oh. how you say it? Shoal. Shoal. Cool. <laughs> Donna, please explain why this. Uh, tube of antibacterial foot fungus cream is the ideal gift for you oh because i'm definitely a, a girl who loves accessories i mean when i started going <laughs> blind and had to wear glasses i just thought it's another accessory we love accessories us girls and what would go better with my shoal sandals than some shoal antifungal bacterial foot powder <laughs> To make my feet all nice in said shawl sandals. It is, it is the, you know, the height of middle age fashion. Thank you very much, Tony. I love it. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. I've just got this image of walking into a Claire's accessories and just seeing <laughs> whole shelves of athlete's foot powder. I've got points to give away and I'm going to give them away now. Um... Mark, I enjoyed the whimsy of learning about the two ingredients. That's very well done. That is one point. Donna, I'm giving you two points because I've got no idea why you started talking about glasses and then and the work. But I do love the accessorizing nature of that. But because Tony named so many rail companies, it, it made me genuinely believe that he collected rail cards. So that is three points to Tony. That's one for Mark, two for Donna, three for Tony. That's that. It's time for round three. What's in the, what's in the box? What's in the box? Round three is called the music round. Regular viewers of What's in the Box know that I like collecting um, <laughs> collections of, uh, of albums, compilation albums. This one is called Lazy Sunday, and it came from... Hang on. Someone <laughs> has defaced my Lazy Sunday album <laughs> cover <laughs> with a Batman doodle. This can only mean Oh no. <laughs> Batman or Band is a brand new game show that I have invented where I am going to name onomatopoeic words and our guests will have to figure out whether it was a Batman sound effect from the Adam West 60s TV show <laughs> or a band. That's how simple the game is. We are going to start with Donna. Donna. The onomatopoeia is rakakaka. 
And that is spelt R-A-K-K-K. Is that Batman or Band? Rakakaka. Um, it sounds like the kind of thing that was popular in the early noughties that, you know, used to play in art galleries and libraries and and didn't chart or anything. So it sounds like it could be like one of those hipster bands, but I'm going to guess Batman sound effect. Rakakaka, R-A-K-K-K, was a Batman sound effect. That's one point oh. for Donna. Next up is Mark. Mark, your onomatopoeic word is wham. W-H-A-M exclamation mark. Batman or band? Well, it's both. <laughs> is your guess both? It's both and also a sweet. Okay. Mm, if you're guessing both, you are wrong. Wham was never a Batman sound effect. Believe me, I've checked. That is no points for Mark, I'm afraid. <laughs> Band though, uh, it was quite a popular one. I don't know which one of those started. <laughs> Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Tony, your sound effect is Biff Bang Pow. And I have to say that that's all three put together. Biff Bang Pow. Is Biff that Bang Pow or band? Biff, Biff Bang Pow. That sounds like it could have been like a 1980s Stock Aitken and Waterman band. Biff, Biff <laughs> Bang Pow. A bit like to Pow. I don't know. So is it Batman or band? Biff, Biff Bang. Biff Bang Pow. Biff Bang Pow. I'm just trying to think whether, I, I mean, obviously, the obvious answer is that it's Batman, but I was just wondering whether it could be three members of a, of a band put together. I, Biff, think Bang, they, Pow. I think they lost to Girls Aloud on Pop Stars, the rivals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Batman. It was a band. Oh, oh my so God. Sorry. Maybe individually they were Batman sound effects, but never all three at the same time. Donna Scott, your next one sorry, is... You have to tell us more about the band, surely. You can't just leave it on they were a band. <laughs> I, I literally Googled band names that sound like onomatopoeia, and I found a list of nine. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, how think I, they, I think they were an experimental Canadian electro band, weren't they, from the 1970s? Possibly. Um, if they were, then you would have known that they were a band, Tony. So yeah, I slipped my memory. Oh, well. Anyway, Donna, your next yes. weird word is Hooberstank. Hooberstank. That's H-O-O-B-A-S-T-A-N-K. Hooberstank. Batman or band? Um, I, but my obscure knowledge of bands is too great for this. I know that it's a band, but I wish it was a sound effect. And the thing is, would it be a sound effect or a smell effect? <laughs> Hooberstank. Hooberstank. Batman or band? <laughs> it's definitely a band. <laughs> it is a band. That's another point for Donna. Next up is Mark. Cub. K-U-B-B. -B. Cub. Cub. See, I'm just trying to think what, what would have caused that sound. <laughs> I think cool. that, if if you are thinking what cool. makes the sound, you're already putting too much more effort than the writers of Batman. In that case, I'm going to go Batman. <laughs> it was a band, I'm afraid. They were <laughs> um, one of many of 2005's keen ripoffs. I blame you for me getting that wrong. What? Because I said it might be Batman. That's the point yes. of the game. It's either Batman or band. Do you like my little logo I've done? I I just think this game's a scam. <laughs> says the man who got wham says the man who got wham yeah you got wham questions. mark that was a very easy and again one. i thought that was a trick question tony your onomatopoeic onomatopoeic word is zwap z w a p p zwap zwap that batman well, or band well that's definitely batman isn't it that's the sound of him having uh, a wank basically isn't it <laughs> <laughs> bat wank yeah. zwap you are well. I want to say you are correct in the fact in the fact that it's a Batman sound effect, not that it's the sound of Batman having a wank. But well, that was Batman, Tony. That is. I, a I say having a wank. That's the noise he makes when he orgasms, doesn't he? he goes whap. <laughs> that's just how it was zipping his fly first. Which, surely. which incarnation of uh, of or Batman was, it, was that a sound effect of? Lego Batman. Lego Batman. Yes. Yeah. Good old yeah. Will on it. Donna Scott, your next yeah. one is Clunketh. Clunketh cometh the man. <laughs> oh gosh! Sounds sounds Shakespearean, doesn't it? Oh, that might be a clue. It might be like if Batman was travelling backwards in time, and then did he ever do that? Ended up doing a fight in the globe or something? No, uh, probably not. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go. Like with probably save his parents rather than visiting Shakespeare. 
I think you'd have priorities. <laughs> Donna, is it Batman or Band? Clunketh. I'm going to go Band. It's Batman. Oh. oh. Uh, from what I can gather, the episode was set at a Renaissance fair. <laughs> And I think the penguin was doing something evil to the knights and the horses and stuff. Anyway, Mark, your last guess on this one. The word is zap. Z-A-P-P. -P. Zap. Is that Batman or band? I mean, it feels too obviously Batman to say Batman. But I am going to say Batman. I think it was too obviously Batman. It's clearly banned. Zap was a band. Oh, dear, Mark. Sorry about that. Tony, the last one of the round, thank God, is yeah. -b 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 -b. That's F L R B B B B B. Is that Batman or band? -b 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 -b. Well, I, I can't, I can't imagine a, a band would would choose that as a as a name. Uh, it'd be particularly yeah, terrible. We've had Huber Stank, so <laughs> yeah, but at least that's pronounceable, isn't it? I, had, I can't imagine people going into our price or the Virgin Megastore going. Can I have the? -b 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 you don't have to imagine anyone going into our price now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah that was a bit of a, unless a, unless a it was Batman going back in time to shop at our price yeah, <laughs> as, as mark said rather than save his parents <laughs> so, <laughs> um, tony batman or band that's got to be batman it's, it is batman and that is the last time we will ever ever play that <laughs> game oh, I like it that. is time Good. for round four Woo! what in the what in the box what in the box Round four is called, ooh, Scandalous. Ooh. Our guests are going to pull out an item of their box, which will be linked to a famous scandalous story from a celebrity. It's then up to them to report on this story, on what the celebrity did, and how it was linked to the item in their box. Uh, first up for this will be Tony. Tony, can you please uh, pull out an item out of your box? Here you go. It's a, it's a dog lead. It's a dog lead, right. And the celebrity that you are going to be breaking the story of involves a dog lead and Embelbert Humperdinck, which I believe was Batman. <laughs> yeah, we we back to Batman or band. So, breaking the story of em Engelbert Humperdinck and a dog lead, here is the scandalous story as reported by Tony Cowards. Tony, have we got you live? We have, yes. Yes. Uh, you may be aware of the uh, 1970s crooner Engelbert Humperdinck. Uh, he was uh, he was very popular back in the day. Uh, we found out worrying, troublesome news about him recently, in that he uh, he likes to get his PA uh, to walk him round on a dog lead. We've actually got the dog lead here. Uh, he likes to be naked and to be walked round the suburbs of Los Angeles. He was picked up by the police around about half past nine this morning. Uh, that's uh, American time, uh, that's uh, 1.30 GMT, uh, and apparently he's in a, an LA uh, police station right now where they're just working out what to charge him with, uh, whether to charge him with sexual perversion or not picking up his own poo and putting it in a dog bin. Okay. For the scandalous nature, I am giving you three out of a possible five, and for the believability of the story, I'm only giving one. I wouldn't believe that if I saw that on the news. But still, that is four <laughs> points altogether there for Ooh. Tony. Next up is Donna. Donna, please tell us what your item from, from your box is. Okay. It's a Stegosaurus. <laughs> I love this. It's uh, everyone's favourite elephant. It's Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So here is Donna Scott live at the scene with this scandal involving Disney's flying elephant Dumbo and a Stegosaurus. Yeah, well, as you can imagine, this wasn't to do with the uh, animation Dumbo, which we're all so familiar, but rather the live action Dumbo and uh, with the, the live uh, actual actors. And the, the, the actor, I believe, was playing Dumbo was Marky Mark, Marky Mark, <gasps> Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> and... Uh, the scandal is that, um, as Marky Mark Wahlberg is, is very famous for having been in a number of different films in which his package has been highlighted, um, <laughs> he, he didn't want to make another film uh, as, as Dumbo and, and, uh, and have the animators sort of like sketch over the package area. So he would put this Stegosaurus down his boxer shorts 
uh, every time they, they, they shot. And uh, in, in order to make his package seem particularly bulky, uh, and so that it gave the animator something to draw around. And um, uh, the, this apparently drew some attention, and, and uh, they said, Marky Mark, what, what, what is that? thing sticking out of your pants and this is this is this is my this is my marky mark and the funky bunch it's my funky <laughs> bunch that says and that they went quite... and uh yeah so that's so what they said indeed she's very funky we can smell it from here oh no um <laughs> plastic that was that was very laborious very for that punchline i approve that is what this <laughs> show is all about for the scandalous nature i'm giving you four points for scandal and for believability i'm giving Another four, because if I saw that on in the papers that Marky Mark was, you know, packing and it wasn't all real, I'd believe that when I listened to it. So that is a full eight points for that performance there, Donna. Next up is Mark Grimshaw. Mark, could you let us know what the item in your box is going to be for this round? Well, uh, this is something from my childhood. You may know that at Walt Disney World, they sell pins related to the... Uh... The characters and stuff like that they've got in the world oh, and this is the most bizarre one that i found that i bought at childhood it's a pin of the logo of who wants to be a millionaire but they that... have a who wants to be a millionaire attraction at walt disney world how did that work basically uh people that were in the parks could go in and play they could so there's proper proper <laughs> finger <laughs> and you're sorry in, in my head it was uh like a roller coaster like you'd, you'd climb up yeah you like, you're, the, you're the bigger the money got <laughs> But, um, okay, no. well, Mark, your celebrities, plural, uh, that your scandal breaking is about are Jada Plinkett Smith, Frank Sinatra, and John Cleese. So, Mark, please tell us the scandalous story between these three and the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire pin from Disneyland. What a well, sentence. It, it's specifically to do with Who Wants to Be a Millionaire because, as you mentioned, Quiz was broadcast earlier this week, and there's one part of the story that they excluded. <gasps> that is that Tequin was innocent. Seated just behind him in the fastest finger first area were Jada Pinkett Smith, Frank Sinatra and John Cleese. And they were the three people coughing to help Charles Ingram. Wow, I did not oh, know that. Was Jada story. Pinkett Smith alive there? Oh, was that Will Smith's wife or daughter? <laughs> yes. I know, I know they named them very similarly. It's it's his um, wife, I think. I'm not okay. sure Frank Sinatra was alive though, is he? <laughs> was it was he was in, uh, in an urn on John Cleese's lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just just for that imagery alone. <laughs> right, points for Mark. Um, scandalous. Like I think the fact that Frank Sinatra was still alive in 2001. Uh, that's connections pretty scandalous. to the mob, of course. Connection to the Frank, mob, of yeah, course. Yeah, Frank's his own death. And thought, oh, you know what? I could share at least one fifth of this million pound prize that we can win. That's worth faking my death for. I still think that's pretty scandalous, giving three points for that. But for believability, just because it's still fresh in my mind with the recent quiz broadcast, and now I have to question if Chris Tarrant, played by Michael Sheen, is now a Disney princess, I <laughs> am giving five points for that. So Ooh. that was nine points altogether. Mark, it's the end of round four. What's in the, what's in the box? What's in the box? Round five is called the quick fire round. It's where our guests will be listing as many things as they can with their specialist subject to the tune of We Didn't Start the Fire. It's pretty yeah. self-explanatory. This is episode nine. Come on, you should know this by now. It's the person in first place who always starts first in this. So at the moment, the lead is Mark Grimshaw. Mark, what is your specialist subject? My specialist subject, I'm going to stick with millionaire. I'm going to go with amounts of money that can be won on who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> oh, singing. Uh, the amounts of money that can be won during who wants to be a millionaire. Here is Mark Grimshaw. One hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, four thousand pounds, eight thousand pounds, sixteen k, thirty two k, sixty four k, one two five k, two fifty k, five hundred k, and then you get the million. Okay, Whoa. well done. Next up, singing to the tune of "We Didn't Start the Fire." It is oh, it's Donna Scott. Donna Scott is currently uh. second. Donna, what is yeah. your specialist subject? Okay, my specialist subject is science fiction authors. Science fiction author singing as many science fiction authors as she can. Here is Donna Scott. 
Ian Watson, Ian Waits, Kim McLeod. They're my mates, Liz Williams, Jane Ben, Kim Lakey Smith. They're not all men. Justina Robson, Eric Brown, Dave Hutchinson, Chris Beckett, Steve Baxter, Terry Pratchett, too. Quick, shiny, Mabel New, Willard, Gareth Powell has grown a beard. Colin Harvey, Ricky Thanks, and really miss Ian and Banks, Michael Markham, Alan Moore. Do I have to say any more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was that was very good. Um, I I tried tracking back because when you said words like "they're my mates," uh, I was I, I nearly put a tally, and I was like, "That's not a science fiction author." <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I I might be off by a couple with this final tally sheet, but uh, let's find out. Tony, who's third at the moment? What is your specialist subject? Um, well, I rather foolishly decided to pick Spanish football teams. Okay, I don't know any. So here's Tony just <laughs> making up syllables as he goes along <laughs> to the tune of We Didn't Start the Fire. Go, Tony! Athletic Bilbao, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Santander. No, that's a bank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Porto Vigo, Betis. Yeah, Seville, we do We do have uh, a rule on what's Real in the box, Sociedad. which is uh, no, no repetition, no hesitation, and no naming something that isn't actually part of the specialist subject. Um, but that oh, was very on, good. Was there. You did, but then you mentioned a bank and then referred <laughs> to the fact you mentioned a bank. It is time for the final scores. In third place with 13 points, it is Tony Cowards. Uh, give a round of applause. Uh, 13 is not the worst score that we've had. Tony, is there anything Thank you'd you. like to plug um, that what you're you're doing uh, at the moment during the quarantine you'd like people to check out? Um, I'm, I'm doing all sorts of bits and pieces, live online stuff, but the best way to keep track of what I'm doing is uh, just follow me on Twitter, at Tony Cowards on Twitter. It's the best way. Excellent. Any links mentioned in this bit will be in the description below on the final edit of the YouTube page. In second place, it is with 26 points. It's Mark Grimshaw. Ooh, ooh. Didn't pay off. Ah, but you did very well. I mean, you didn't lose like some people. Um, <laughs> Mark, is there anything you would like to plug? Uh, I'm currently doing a series in which I chat to comedians and play stupid games. I don't know if anyone watching this would like that kind of format. But it's uh, <laughs> called Mark Grimshaw is Socially Distant. It's on my YouTube channel. And you can also find me on Twitter at Mark Grimshaw 16. Excellent. Again, links in the description below. And the winner with 34 points, it is Donna Scott. Woo! Well done, Donna. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Yes. Um, so if you've got kids, check out uh, my comedy group's um, web uh, YouTube, which is the uh, Extraordinary Time Travelling Adventures of Baron Munchausen. We're producing improvised video stories for children during the lockdown. And at some point, I'll get around to doing my podcast, which is the Lemonade uh, Budget for Champagne Social Butterflies. Both of those things have got stupidly long names, I know. Um, I will record one eventually. And um, one of my anthologies, uh, um, Great British, uh, sorry, The Best of British Science Fiction is available on storybundle.com at the moment. It's a big bundle special, pay what you like kind of thing. Fantastic. That was Donna Scott, everyone, and Mark Grimshaw and Tony Cowards. It was a lovely show today. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you'd like to support the show, you can do. You can follow us on Twitter at Woods in the Books, where you'll be, uh, hello, Mark, <laughs> where you'll be finding out all the guests that we've got along this week. We've got some fantastic ones. Uh, if you want to contribute, uh, paypal.me slash frizzfrizzle, that will continue the show, hopefully along. We're we comedians at the moment. We've lost all our income. So this is how we basically do it. We, we ask our friends to come along, and then we beg for money on the internet. <laughs> One more time, we had Donna Scott, Mark Grimshaw, and Tony Cowards. Now, can everyone Everyone, please wave at the camera for 23 seconds as the end credits play. What's in the box?